Sega. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Made in Japan. And today we're checking out Fantasy Star Online 2. This game is about to consume my soul. So I thought I might actually share it with a whole lot of you. I was a massive fan of Fantasy Star Universe back in the day. I was a big fan of Fantasy Star Online back on the Dreamcast days. This game has been out for years now and we're never really going to get a European release or an American release of the game. So I had to do it. I had to bring it to you here on Made in Japan. So check this out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is Fantasy Star Online 2. Now, that might have confused the hell out of you, but there is like an explanation for what was going on there with actual battleships versus futuristic robots on a bizarre version of planet Earth. But um, that kind of relates into more like the longer plot of Fantasy Star Online, which kind of mixes the reality of our world with the reality of the game, which you could probably check out for the anime. But what we're here is for the gameplay. So let's just get right into character design. Right back from the Fantasy Star series, has been so far we've actually had Newman's cast and humans or humars or whatever they want to call them essentially a series of races that um, have different kind of basic as uh, basic kind of like allowances for magic and for skill ability while also having a particular unique visual design uh, some of the new men being the much taller kind of life mixtures of human and um, mage characters, well then you also have the cute little kind of like female mages and then you've got the cast which are the, the badass robots which are either male or female mattering on whatever you require them to be. The selection of races and the detail and the character customization in this game are massive. I, even from like the very beginning and because this being a free to play game I was surprised by the amount of detail that we had and whenever you go from choosing your main character type or your main um, race you then still have to go into what kind of weapon skills you want to have now personally whenever I was creating my character for the first time here in the game I wanted to go with something that was nice and long range I always find myself playing that kind of character anyway so I gather rifles or bows and arrows but you have options of magical characters which also have summonable creatures you've got uh, long range blaster characters you've got people with um, bows and arrows you've got short range machine guns and gunners you have the big blade users that are actually there just to womp on everything really nice up and close with big long swings and you've got dual wielders and you've got subclasses up the wazoo so let's see what one I end up going with I'm going to go with the kind of yeah, I think in here with the bows and arrows and a kind of a katana class, very much, uh, um, I think a recent addition to Fancy Star Online 2, allowing you to kind of duel up so that you have um, a, a close range weapon, which is kind of quick single strikes, and of course long range attacks with the bow and arrow. Now, whenever you go into create your character, you have a whole raft of default options. It's kind of hard to really 
understand the menu system because I don't speak Japanese. There is a translated version of this game in some regions, specifically in um, South, uh, I think there's SEN, which is a South, uh, South Asia kind of uh, version where it's it been translated in English, but has a lot of issues with um, costs and actually being able to get access because it's uh, IP blocked. But uh, the Japanese version itself has also been translated on the PC, so if you want to try this without any issues about being able to read what's going on, you might want to think about trying the PC version over the PSN version. This game is easily accessible and available on the PS4, but as you can see, with the many, many options, it's hard to tell what it is without trial and experimentation to work your way from face to face and literally try every option to know what you want to do with your character. I personally find myself... Uh, just kind of going with similar enough defaults and a little minor changes just affecting wider scale things like height and build because whenever you start getting into these really minute controls where you're able to control eye line and nasal ships i just didn't know what i could do otherwise so once i've got my character basically designed up here i had to choose a voice of course so uh, that's us pretty much sorted out now aren't we hmm Create one and save it just in case I actually lose everything <laughs> because uh, one of the things I found myself having a problem with was creating this. I end up making a mistake two or three times and having to restart altogether. And <laughs> just like uh, work my way through the emoticons as well. Now the voice chat in this game, uh, whenever it's playing, does mouth mimic. Uh, it also happens whenever you are typing in messages. Your lip movement goes along with it. So you could machine them this quite well if you really wanted to. I've been thinking about it, but um, I just don't have the capability of managing the gameplay. I would need to kind of be teamed up with somebody who's on the PC that's got the translation of the menus at least. You can see a few of the really nice backdrops and wondrous worlds that we actually have uh, to go and visit in the future. I mean, this one's kind of a, a Japanese pagoda area. And you see the fact that there's weather effects and weather control as you go to each location. Keep the hair as it is. Don't be changing things. What? Oh, sorry. I was wondering what was going on here. So you can see here all the changes I made to the body whenever you remove them and remove them so everything works almost in a layer system so if you kind of balance out what you want you can actually just drop a layer on top of the other to kind of like shape it the way you really really want it to be customized so even the smallest things down to under my underwear or my height are all affected by a layer system oh I remember that noise so let's get into the actual storyline and plot Obviously, you've been traveling through space for a long period of time, and they've been keeping you in a casket to make sure that you're kept uh, pine fresh for whenever you arrive to your location. So finally, we're going to get uncorked, I suppose, and let's see where we're going to go from there. A few first soft, simple steps gliding across the ground as we lose contact with it. <laughs> Why, thank you very much for your introduction. <laughs> Obviously, we don't know what she's saying at all. I'm um, assuming it's welcome, Britain Longbow Ward. Namey name of namey nameyness. Is oh, her name's Shiro? Shira? Oh, it's nice to meet you, Shira. So we're trying to get introduced to our very basic beginning missions here, so I'm assuming she's just kind of giving us the basic uh, intro, like, you've been asleep for a while. We are arrived in space. We need your help to help us with this battle, so come and join us in our world. Yes, exactly, dear. I understand exactly what you're saying. So you want me to go over there and punch things? Works for me. So the first world looks so, so similar to the opening world of... Yeah, Forest. Forest 1-1. One, one. That's why we start off in Fantasy Star Online. Why not start in the exact same place again? The game obviously looks a lot more upgraded from the Fancy Star Online and even the Fancy Star Universe series. I'm just, um, I'm just excited to be back playing this. You don't understand how long I lost my life just hammering through this. Oh, even the monsters look exactly as they, well, not exactly as they do upgrade for modern graphics. So you can see what the actual gameplay of it, it, it is now. It's, it's a third person action adventure game with um, RPG and combat. It's kind of plays very much like a, I suppose like before this game came out, it would have been probably, it'll be compared to a Guild Wars, I suppose, with the uh, timing and the battle all being kind of like based around your bars, but also uh, 
allowing you to dodge in real time rather than worrying about numbers versus numbers. Uh, but the thing is, Guild Wars 2 took this mechanic and this world and style from Fantasy Star Online as well. I mean, the, the plenty of games have actually had this particular type, but it's just the fact that Fantasy Star has had it for so long, it's refined into the action of it. Um, one of the things that actually caught me off guard in this was that I could jump and dash. So those are little touches of being able to kind of like interrupt yourself in midair and stop movement or to actually charge attacks. It, it, it just adds that a little bit more to the, the combat in Fantasy Star rather than actually just being standstill and just strafing around your enemy at all times. It means that whenever you come to boss battles and other events, you can kind of dive into attack or dive out to attack or dive out for defense and get yourself cleared. It, it, there's a little bit of strategy based around it. Of course, I'm just going to spend time breaking boxes now. <laughs> uh, I'm liking the actual, like, the weapon, like, the basic kind of, like, loadout of attacks that you have before you start. I mean, I'm assuming there will be a lot more interesting skills for me to unlock and learn as I play through this, but basically, getting my widespread shot and my single shot, that works perfectly fine. I miss this kind of, like, intro bit in between it all. That noise of loading screen was just... It's nostalgic as hell for me <laughs> because I love this game series. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just the fact that I'm gushing uncontrollably about Fantasy Star here now rather than actually being less opinionated. But it's just because there, there's so many like entrenched little memories of me for running through these games that I I let go of the entire problem about being in Japanese. Oh, now the creatures are actually looking a lot more interesting. Like that's the reason I was concerned that I wasn't going to see new character types or new enemy types really early in the game because I was going to be having to repeat over like the same stuff that was in Fantasy Star Online. These appear to be the, the new kind of like dark car, dark false uh, shadows that show up to attack you. They also show up in the Fantasy Star Online 2 animated series which um, has finished its run for this season but kind of introduces this world even more so where it actually like these things could cross between dimensional barriers as can you thus explaining why we're actually fighting battleships and airplanes from World War 1 in a futuristic setting. Oh, going to battle. Let's see what we can do. Yep. So, emergency code. Emergency code. <laughs> Boom. Down you go. I'm actually liking the, the short range um, speed of the katana. It is. It feels so OP just like hammering through those guys. Oh, that was just satisfying. Right, so, mission done. Where are we on to next? Where are we on to next? Is that the chapter complete? Now, the cutscenes that actually fall in between these are all voice acted in Japanese and obviously use in-game assets. So they're not going to be ridiculous, but I like that extra little touch. It reminds me a lot of the stuff they did in Fantasy Star Universe for the um, explanation of the story missions. What they did with Fantasy Star Universe was had a offline season, and then they did the sequel season of it as an online-only content for like um, the what they called it, the uh, Challenge of the Illuminus or something. And even that finished off and continued on the story even further, which allowed you to play as your character with the character you played in the offline season as a background character for the rest of your world. This continually developing plot is, again, very Guild Wars 2 or Final Fantasy 14 esque where it's a world that keeps on developing and you just kind of work your way through it in single-player missions and single-player content that you can party up on or you can just go and do specific party-involved tasks. This, the, this, this game, if it was in English, would do so well. Mostly because I would spend my money, and only my money, and all my money, on playing it. This would be the... the I, I think what we need is a really, really good sci-fi action RPG that's for online, rather than actually focusing so much on all the fancy ones that we've had so far. It's 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 the reason why I haven't got into MMOs so much as of late. Well, guys, I mean, this has kind of been a first intro look at the first chapter or the first prologue of Fancy Star Online 2. You can play this. You can go and get a Japanese account and play this, and you can happily join me if you want to. And I hope you guys actually enjoyed having a free first glance with me and all my excitement. I will see you guys all in the next episode of Made in Japan. And there's so much more for us to see very, very soon. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.